So we're back with A2K. This is part two, the Korean boot camp section. It's episode 16. And as you can see, we have to follow the Korean aesthetic now. So we're taking this very seriously now, as you can see. So we have these nine girls. They're in Korea now. And as you can tell, Melissa is not there. We've got the blown out Korea style coloring and lighting. Uh, there's a six month gap between LA boot camp and this one. And as you can see, Kaylee has clearly evidently aged up a little bit. And so she looks very different. She has no braces anymore. Uh, she, I wasn't the first person to notice this. Everyone noticed it in previews. Uh, and so the girls apparently had like a whole day to enjoy some stuff and they get to see the JYP training center. Uh, and apparently in the JYP training center this talent they practice in the basement in a couple of studios named after some inspirations for JYP so there's one for Michael Jackson uh, there's one for uh, Bobby Brown and I think the last one might be for Prince or Madonna but I'm not sure there may be like a couple more studios I feel like there's three but there might be more but anyways I feel like they get to see the Michael Jackson studio uh, but you did see the door to the Bobby Brown studio as well uh, and then you also got to see them go to the, well, this is the dance studio. You also get to see the recording studio as well. Uh, but anyways, after that, they all go to the Coliseum. And eventually JYP enters and they all start taking things very seriously. He explains Melissa was unable to start in Korea for personal reasons. Uh, she seemed not that upset about it, or at least she put on a show. Uh, and she sent a video message here and so she seems okay she uh, she either made a personal choice uh, either not believing that it was something that she wanted to do maybe she wants to be a different kind of singer and not really a dance performer uh, and so that's her choice uh, maybe it had to do with her guardianship but I feel like that wouldn't really be an issue I think like if you explained to your parents that you have a chance to be a big pop star they probably would have made sacrifices for it but anyways, now that they're here in Korea, they're going to be trained for three months. And this is the make it or break it part of the show. They got to prove it or lose it. And while they're here, they're going to be making uh, three evaluations. Uh, and they're going to be ranked after each evaluation. Now, JYP said that uh, after these evaluations, if they're in the last place twice in a row, or not twice in a row, but at least twice. That means they're eliminated. Now, I'm kind of confused by this because if there's only three evaluations, that means only one person can really get cut. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what it means? Unless there's more to it than that. Uh, well, I guess... No, it, it, really, it really is because they're going to be ranked uh, on their own. Uh, next to others... So only one person can be last in each evaluation. So I'm assuming only one person can possibly get cut. And that means the final group is going to be nine girls. Right? Or less. Uh, depending on like what, whether or not they think it's, they're, it's possible for them to uh, deliver on the goods. But at the end of the day, uh, he still uh, maintains that it's not competitive. It's You're basically competing against yourself. And so... Uh, there are some intense previews for a while, but uh, after that, he starts showing them an upgraded necklace. Uh, and here, for the upgraded necklace, is some fancy machine that brings it out. And then he talks about how three stones will be given for the next evaluations. And then there's a final stone decided by attitude, and it's determined from uh, stickers. <laughs> stickers you receive from teammates and trainers. Uh, and so... Uh, I guess if you don't make good on impressing your buddies or helping them out, uh, and then if your trainers don't see you putting in a conscientious, conscientious effort, uh, then you can really be screwed over by that last stone there. Uh, but basically, JRP says that the qualities he's looking for uh, has to do with this. Now, this is a speech he gave in the Easy Project. It's a speech he gave in 16 when Twice was formed. And this is something that he's... Uh, always talked about 
which is that there's three principles here honesty diligence and humility uh, and honesty i feel like he's been explaining this for a long time now but he's basically saying be the same person you are on stage and off stage and if you are not a good person who can be uh who will not make mistakes in public uh then you better figure out how to make yourself into a good person and then just learn to be that way be a classy non-swearing person he uh, he particularly said don't swear to twice and learn not to be like that uh, and then the next quality is diligence basically meaning work hard and practice hard for the benefit of your own long-term gains and he was talking about how he himself uh, he's one of the longest lasting k-pop artists and it's because he constantly put in the work and uh, constantly put in effort to stay relevant and hone his abilities and stuff and uh, I guess collaborate and sign people anyways and then there's humility which is about being a team player and helping each other out uh, and at the same time you can say it's really about not being selfish and prideful and I think that there is also be like if you're not if you don't have humility then you can't even admit that you're not that good sometimes and sometimes the team will say you're not doing that good and if you're going to be stubborn about it maybe you won't uh, be able to take criticism and it's a sign that you can't improve on your own really these groups have to keep themselves in check. And so uh, he gave the uh, speech, and I feel like there's a bingo card for that. Yeah, the honesty speech. Uh, and let's see just anything else. Uh, a lot of these don't even apply anymore. Uh, no, that's it. So we're, bingo is going along uh, pretty poorly. <laughs> I put too many hard ones in here. I put too many hard ones. I don't think I'm going to get a bingo. Uh, it's too late to get bingo. Unless we get a sports day and JYP in some kind of red leather. But anyways, let's get back to this show. So after this little section, JYP goes to D-Day, which is the day where they're going to have evaluation. Uh... He basically wants to see how well they prepare it after six months. And the first level test that they're going to have to gauge where they're at right now uh, is going to be on the stage uh, on the 76th floor of a building. Now, I was worried they're going to do it on the rooftop, uh, but apparently they're not going to do that. Uh, and when he sees them, he, he asks them uh, whether or not, uh, well, what they enjoyed about... Uh, uh, Korea and then you get to see a small montage of Christina just eating all these foods and then everyone else talking about how they met a lot of artists uh, and so they seem to have a lot of fun JYP says at this point that he's starting to form an image of the group and he says that everyone has a chance but JYP needs everyone to prove that they want it and right now they had three months left to prove it after this first evaluation and then after that, we just get into the individual mission. And so the first person up is Kaylee. She's performing Nyan's Pop. And she basically said she worked on face expressions and making her moves seem neater. Uh, one funny thing is that when she was in practice, she practiced singing while planking, which I thought was kind of impressive and funny. Uh, I noticed that behind the she scenes, she was still tearing up, just talking about her own practice. Uh, and then... In in the behind the scenes thing, her voice was a little bit funny too. She was like she was like whispering, and I don't know if that's resting her voice or if she came down with something which she was kind of worried about. Uh, but aside from that, uh, her dance trainers and her vocal trainers seemed very pleased and content with her progress. And so let's just get to her performance and see how she did. So from the beginning, I felt early on her voice was clear and it was very good. Uh, throughout the performance, I noticed that she seemed to be losing breath, but her moves were good. And I noticed also that uh, she was either dropping lines or it was intentional, as in you don't sing the backup lines or you're just doing the ad-libs rather than the main chorus. And so I'm not going to hold that against her. But I did notice that because of her losing breath, uh, some of her movements seemed to be suffering near the end. 
And then I also noticed that she was kind of faking enthusiasm on some parts. It's kind of like you're going, yay, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like a fake yay. And so that's my estimation of her performance. It was pretty good. I think it's better than what she's done before. Now, JYP's criticism, he said that she could have more fun. And she's, and she seems desperate to prove herself by trying too hard to impress on the technical level. But she still needs to focus on kind of like feeling out the song and just having fun. And I feel like that's similar to what I said about faking enthusiasm. Uh, but otherwise, he actually thought the whole thing was great. And he said the song wasn't easy. And so he knows that the stuff that I talked about, like maybe losing your breath or dropping your lines, that's not like it wasn't what she did for what little training she had was pretty impressive. And she performed with her full voice. And because of that, uh, because she impressed him, she ended up getting the first stone. And so, so far, uh, the first evaluation was pretty successful. And she got a stone. So next up is Kendall. Now, Kendall is performing Sun Me's 24 Hours. And her own motivation in doing the song was to express the emotions well. And she was basically saying that she's playing to her strength. Because that stuff is what JYP has always praised her for. And so, uh, in practice, she was struggling with things like uh, pronunciation, but also connecting meaning to the sounds of the words uh, in Korea, because she doesn't understand what the words mean. Uh, and so, working with the trainer, she, was, she got corrected and she took notes, and I think the trainer noticed that, and she seemed really uh, good about the feedback. And so... Because of that, she actually got a sticker from the trainer, right? And then also in an interim evaluation, which they didn't really show much for, but clearly the, clearly these guys are performing in front of each other uh, as part of the official process right here. So they're all performing each other's bits. And uh, she received a lot of good feedback from her team rank, teammates who expected her to rank first. Uh, now, nearing the end of her practice behind the scenes stuff, she talked about how her voice was not feeling great because of vocal strain. And I hope it is vocal strain. I don't think it has to do with air quality, which is kind of a common thing in these kind of competition shows that take place in the city. Uh, because JYP is apparently has very good air quality recycling in the, in the building. But, you know, there is also air quality outside of the building when you're going home to sleep. But I feel like, I don't know if they have dorms in JYP uh, or if they have to live outside of the building. Uh, but I, I feel like they should have dorms in the building. But if they don't, then uh, that could be an explanation. But there's also the issue of like uh, diet and just uh, foreign, uh, f what is it, foreign microbes that can affect you differently in another country. For example, if I go to Thailand, uh, some of the food there I, and the water quality there, sometimes it's best to bring your own bottled water because uh, you might not adapt well to the water quality there. Uh, but anyways... During her performance, I noticed that she got a kind of beneficial edit here. Like, these, this camera is not only doing fancy effects in editing, but the camera guy is actually doing some kind of fancy movements. A little bit. This here, she is, she's a little distant here. Now this camera guy, he's like doing a Dutch angle here. And then she gets like this ghost figure that explodes here. And he's doing like some beneficial stuff for her. But that aside, I thought this performance was really good. She was delivering on the expression in a way that you wouldn't really expect someone of her age to be able to do. And she seemed to understand the movements very well. I could go, uh, I feel like she could go uh, even further on expressing and extending some of her movements. But for what it was, I felt like she did it really well. Like, this is something that you could see someone doing in, like, a Nickelodeon movie, you know? Or, like, one of those, like, teeny bopper movies where, like, uh, like a ballet girl is, like, learning a new type of dance or something. It looks good for what it is. And it was, it was kind of flawless, to be honest, based on the level that she's performing at. Now, she could do better, like I said. She could extend her arms out more and do some certain things pretty good. But, like, a lot of it was actually quite good. Like, I'm not going to knock her for anything and I feel like anyone knocking her on a lot of the details would be like 
uh, not even really looking at the performance at that point. You're not really taking in what's important, which is uh, the expression, the emotion, and what she's trying to convey. So JYP gives his feedback, and he says, as someone who composed the song, he actually asked her if she knew she was going to perform it, perform it, knowing that she would get a good response from him, because he thinks that that's how she performed it. And so he felt like she was absolutely confident that she was going to blow him away. And it was, I guess, because of in the unspoken responses they give, he felt like she was kind of like, you know, it's like playing him like an instrument in a way. But she was saying that she was still nervous and she didn't know how he would respond. And in this way, way I would say that uh, she's very good at uh, performing to her own expectation. And those expectations may be in line with what JYP has as expectations. And so there's that synergy there. She probably belongs to this company in a way. And so uh, basically, other than that, he said he could pick things out, but it doesn't matter because she's performing it well and it doesn't show. Uh, and so mainly what impressed him the most is that her acting was good and she performed as herself as well. He said that she didn't try to do it like Sun Me. Now... Uh, send me she's very seductive <laughs> the way she does it is way more seductive in a very different vibe whereas this is more kind of like it's a this is this is more demure than seductive so i would say that kendall's way is more demure rather than seductive and she did great acting and because of that she got a stone and so so far kaylee and kendall both got stones and that's all we get and that's at the 45 minute mark of this episode now, at the end of this, uh, we get to see some slight previews, but not really anything that gives too much away. Something weird also happens after this is that they tell us that there's going to be some kind of finale on the 20th and the 21st, which is a Wednesday right here. And so September 20th, which is a Wednesday, and September 21st, which is the normal schedule, special two-part series finale. Now, that's not that far away. In fact, that's about six episodes. Six episodes, and we're supposed to have three levels of evaluation. Which kind of concerns me. Because if we've only seen two performances on this episode, that means the next episode has to crunch in all the other performances. Uh... And then there'll be five episodes left. And if we're reserving two for the finale, which is the final performance, then that means uh, there must be around two or three episodes where they crunch in the second evaluation. Uh, and then who knows what else happens after that. But yeah, everything is going to be rushed by. I wonder, because of how quickly the episodes are going to go by, if there are going to be some people who are not doing well and they're going to be summarized because they're not going to make it in the group because you don't want to summarize anybody if they're all really good but i don't know if they can fit all of them in but then again jyp did have a long speech in this one which is the honesty speech so maybe they'll do a lot better at fitting it in uh in terms of just the performances but i feel like i i don't know when you look at it jyp speech where did it end and where did the where did uh, Kaylee's performance start? Kaylee comes out at around the 22 minute mark. And so if every episode is going to be 45 minutes like they did for this episode moving forward, that means that uh, they can fit in four performances in the next one. But there's still nine people in the group. And so it looks like it's going to be two more episodes for the next one. Two more that's just the first uh, star level test if they do two more episodes and that leaves four more episodes and they have to crunch those in so i don't know what's going to happen maybe a lot of people will be dropped or will feel like dropping out or i don't know i don't know what's going to go on here maybe they're going to get summarized and not going to make the final group and they're not going to get the character stone but uh, that's going to be very disappointing i've been hearing rumors that the group only has like i don't know four members <laughs> So, who knows? But anyways, I guess that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comment box.
down below. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.